destiny and fate. People think they're the same thing, but they're not. Fate is fixed. Fate is something you come into this world with that you can't control, like your eye color, eventually your height, the color of your skin. But destiny is something that's fluid. I believe destiny is something we can create. I believe destiny is the future that we can dream, that we choose. And I've dedicated a good part of my life to making destiny come true and reimagining it. For 28 years, I've been a dance educator, an artistic director, an executive director at an organization called Destiny Art Center, appropriately named and not by accident. Destiny Art Center is an arts education and violence prevention center based in Oakland, California. We teach dance, theater, martial arts, self-defense, conflict resolution, and media arts to youth ages 3 to 24. Our mission is to inspire and ignite social change through the arts because we know that it's often the artists who reshape and reimagine our world. And if we want to create a world that's best for everyone, if we want to create justice and equity, we have so much to learn from the artists. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Honestly, I haven't seen many places like Destiny just to really express myself, just to try to be free. Dancing and acting and singing and all of that is a way to express yourself. A safe place, anyone can come and learn dance and other martial arts. The task is to try and live our lives in the way that we envision freedom looking like and feeling like. You should know that we are holding together the broken tatters of a broken economy and a broken democracy. How do we hear each other? How do we reconcile the conflict in a peaceful way? In martial arts, you really have to focus and it translates over to their academics. Each belt uh, represents what they've learned and how long they've been in the art. It's also really cool in the martial arts program to see our young people grow with their confidence. They feel more connected to society and want to actually affect change and where they see injustice to address it. It's important to learn what's going on in the world. I don't really hear about it in school, so I kind of have to go to Destiny to learn about it. I learned a lot about racism and how people battle it and making an impact on other people's views. It calls us to make a difference now. And I'm in the now. And it don't take no x-ray to see right through my smile. I know. I'll be on the go. You should treat everybody with respect and equity because everybody deserves a chance at a good life. We also need to go to where young people are and we serve thousands of young people that way. Destiny partners with schools and communities because they are really trying to change the lives of underserved youth. It helps youth become their biggest self so that when they leave here, if they never dance again, if they don't ever study martial arts again, that, that part of themselves is still there. Destiny Arts Center serves over 3,000 young people in our center in North Oakland and in public schools, community centers, and juvenile halls throughout the Bay Area. We have two dance theater companies. Some of the work that you saw up there was from them, and they perform for up to 20,000 audience members every single year. I, for the last 25 years, have co-directed the Destiny Arts Youth Performance Company, which is our teen dance theater company. So in essence, for most of my 52 years, social justice, creativity, and community have been right at the center of my life, for better or for worse. And it all started with my parents. 
My parents are both social activists. My stepmother is a social activist. My stepmother and my mother are both visual artists. My mother is African American. My father is white. They got married and had me in the 60s when it was still illegal in many states for interracial couples to get married. So in a way, social justice is just in my blood. <laughs> and dance is also in my blood. From the time I was little, five years old, I knew I wanted to be a dancer. So I trained really hard in ballet and modern dance. I performed in professional touring dance companies for many years, and then I met the Dance Brigade. The Dance Brigade is a fierce feminist dance theater company out of San Francisco, and they really brought together my passion for social justice and my passion for dance. They were perfect for me. And eventually, inspired by that work, I started the Destiny Arts Youth Performance Company. And in that company, I co-create original productions every single year with a group of teenagers to highlight the, matter, the, the issues that matter the most to them. Issues like cyberbullying and lack of self-esteem. Issues like racism and racial profiling. Issues like sexism and gentrification. Now, if you know teenagers, you've heard them say, that's not fair. Well, my job, as hard as it can be some days, is to channel that obsession with fairness into a commitment to social justice. My job is to channel their sense of annoyance and lack of agency into a knowing that they have the power to make an impact in a positive way on the world around them. And they do that by telling their personal stories, often excruciatingly painful and just as often ecstatically liberating. They tell their stories through their bodies. They challenge audiences to revision the world through their stories. Now, I usually work with young people, but the adults that I work with are also walking around with what I would say a dangerous sense of disillusionment. Especially right now when our social and political systems feel too big and too broken to fix. We all need to be reminded that we can make a difference. In the next video I'm going to show, it's from a show called Seed Language. In it, Jessica, who's 17, plays Alicia Garza, co-founder of the Black Lives Matter movement. Take a look. Ayanna Stanley Jones, Pearl Underwood, Miriam Carey, Yvette Smith, Tanisha Anderson, Shelley Frey, Darnisha Harris, Melissa Williams, Alicia Thomas, Chantel Davis, Rakia Boyd, Cherise Francis, and Renisha McBride. These are all women who have been killed by the state. There are thousands more who are missing, disappeared, murdered, or simply forgotten. Black Lives Matter often gets framed as a movement that aims to save the lives of black men. And it's true. Black men are disproportionately impacted by incarceration, disproportionately impacted by police murder, but we are here too. Black women are the fastest growing population in prisons and jails in this country. There are more than one million women who are behind bars. And when we talk about women, especially women of color, specifically black women, you should know that we are holding together the broken tatters of a broken economy and a broken democracy. And let us not forget the many, 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 many indigenous women who have been disappeared, who are holding their families together on a shoestring, if that. We carry the burden of inequality poverty, 
lack of access to healthcare resources. We carry that on our backs, and we certainly carry that in our wounds. So maybe you're inspired by what you just saw to make a difference. I believe that when people tell honest stories in skillful, elegant ways, we inspire people to make a change. Think about it. So many social justice movements started by just a bunch of people getting together and telling their often painful stories. Like the Me Too campaign, for instance, where women are posting Me Too on social, social media sites if they've been sexually harassed or sexually abused. I believe that campaign has an amazing potential to galvanize huge numbers of people to make a difference. I also believe that we need to be present in our bodies. We need to move the bodies that we have if we want to shape a destiny that's authentic, right? Do you understand what I'm telling you? <laughs> because there's lots of movements for social justice where people don't move. And then why do I think that's important? Well, what I know, what I've experienced with my students and with myself is that if we move in collaborative, mindful ways, energetic, rigorous ways, if we get out of our heads and off our devices, we feel our impact on each other more acutely. We're more tender, we're more compassionate. We have more empathy. We're less likely to resort to violence when conflict arises. And most importantly to me, we feel this amazing sense of joy. And to me, in this time, joy is an act of resistance. Joy is a revolutionary act, right? So now, you've been sitting down all day, so you're gonna stay seated, but I'm gonna get you to move. <laughs> now, if you were my kids, you would be standing up, but roll your shoulders a little bit. Just roll them right there in your seat. Sit on the edge of your seat, y'all, because that's where we need to be to make a difference. Be on the edge. Be on the edge. Now, now rip, move your ribs from side to side. Yeah, there you go. Uh, uh. Then take your hips. Even though you're sitting down, roll your hips, because that's where creation started. We want to be creative. <laughs> roll your hips around. Yeah. Yeah. Now take your hands up. Take them up. Shake them around. Shake them around. Shake them around. Now take your breath. And drop your hands lightly. Now you might feel a little awkward or silly. You might have bumped somebody, right? But I bet you you're present. I bet you're present right now in a way that you may have not been when I started to talk. <laughs> and I believe presence, presence, being present with one another, with whatever is going on in the world, is required if we truly want to make a difference. So I got you present, one more video. It's a trailer from a documentary film about destiny called Free. We just moved in the movement. 12 is when I really started thinking guns were cool, drugs was tight. I didn't have a father to tell me how to, to live my life. It was only the streets. First started cutting myself because I keep having feelings for this other person. Since I was eight, I was been in 11 foster homes because my dad was incarcerated under drugs, rape, kidnap charges. Ugh. <sighs> Without dance, I would be out there really acting a fool, probably pregnant. kids dealing with, really. 
What we're like doing here is revolutionary for like a bunch of teenagers. Like the show that we create, we wrote from the bottom of our hearts. I am sitting on a sidewalk. There's a sign taped to my forehead that reads F R E E. I am free. For some kids, this process of being in the company and creating work together is about saving their lives. I think they're taking with them a sense that telling the truth is better in the long run than holding it all in. It's not just another secret that clutters my mind. It happens happened to me. We know that there's no such thing as being saved by some superhero, right? Being saved is being a part of, of a community of people that tell the truth. It doesn't make their lives easy. It makes their lives rich. I still get choked up watching that. Um, and I've seen it a million times. <laughs> in, that, in that trailer, you met Alasia. She's the one that said, it's not just another secret that clutters my mind. It happened. It happened to me. Well, she was talking about being sexually abused as a child. And she actually remembered her abuse in a destiny sharing circle on retreat. A year later, she wrote a monologue about her experience and performed it in this documentary and in front of over 2,000 live audience members in eight public performances. Opening night, her entire family in the front rows to support her. Alasia performed and wrote that difficult monologue because she wanted to heal. Alasia performed and wrote that difficult monologue as a gift to our audiences, to anyone who may have experienced that same thing, or to someone that may be close to experiencing that, and she wanted to, to save them that experience. Now Alasia is getting a master's degree in social work, so she can give that gift to other people. Because she knows that to tell the truth out loud is a piece of obliterating, dissolving any of the obstacles that are in the way of creating a positive future for herself, a positive destiny. So finally, I'm going to share with you a poem that I always share, written by one of my former students named Jelena. Jelena just graduated from Wellesley College and now is making social justice films. When she wrote this poem, she was 16 years old. It's called, I Wish I Was a Painter. I wish I was a painter. If I were a painter, I would create the world the way it could be. A world where sex wasn't used as a weapon and my $10 shoes weren't stitched by an 11-year-old seamstress in Shanghai. Not a world without conflict, but a world without ignorance. Not a world without anger, but a world without apathy. Each brushstroke carefully creating communities and countries. Imagination, innovation, inspiration intertwined with the breeze. If I were a painter, I would recreate our cultural regression and relaunch a revolution. We can reinvigorate our nation. We can be the change we want to see. Together, we can paint the world with our words. Jelena's poem, Jelena's words, are a call to action, a wake up, a shake up, an invitation, an incantation to action, to step out of distraction and reimagine our destiny. So let's answer her call. Let's do whatever it takes to take back the parts of our lives that we feel are spinning out of control and know mind and body 
that no matter how dire the situations are in our lives and the lives of our countrymen and countrywomen and the lives of people all over the world, no matter how dire, and it's going to continue to be tough, but if we can dream it, if we can dream a destiny, if we know that we can, then we can create a destiny that's positive, a future that's positive for our own lives and for the lives of everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you for moving with me. Thank you for being here as folks who want to be inspired and, who, and move with me literally. So take it all with you, y'all. Thank you so much. Thank you.